Hi, welcome. So this is the video on Assisi by Norman McCaig with me, Miss AB. We're going to just go through the poem, through all the key themes and ideas and everything you should need to know for National 5. So we're going to start off by just reading the poem through. So here we go. The dwarf with his hands on backwards sat, slumped like a half-filled sack, on tiny twisted legs from which sawdust might run. Outside the three tiers of churches built in honour of St Francis, brother of the poor, talker with birds over whom he had the advantage of not being dead yet. A priest explained how clever it was of Giotto to make his frescoes tell stories that would reveal to the illiterate the goodness of God and the suffering of his son. And I understood the explanation and the cleverness. A rush of tourists clucking contentedly fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. It was they who had passed the ruined temple outside, whose eyes wept pus, whose back was higher than his head, whose lopsided mouth said grazie in a voice as sweet as a child's when she speaks to her mother, or a bird's when it spoke to St Francis. Okay, so that's the poem and I've got some images along the side to give you a sense of what's going on. And now we're going to break it down piece by piece. So for the first stanza, um, the dwarf. We start the poem focused on this character, right? So we know, even though the poem's called Assisi, that the dwarf is going to be the key part. Hands on backwards. Metaphor shows how just painful the dwarf's affliction is. Um, and we're given this straight away. Sat slumped. So we've got some good alliteration here that's sibilance. Um, to give us a sense of sort of deflation for the dwarf. Like a half-filled sack, this is a simile. And it sort of denigrates the dwarf, shows how poor, and gives a sense of poverty and worthlessness. On tiny twisted legs. So tiny twisted gives us alliteration again. This time it's not that hissing S sound, it's sharp T sound. To give that sense of pain. Sawdust might run. We've got this sort of extended metaphor, the sack, um, giving us a sense that the dwarf is almost like a puppet. It's dehumanizing. Um, outside the three tiers of churches. Now this gives us nice word choice, which emphasizes the contrast between the dwarf and the church. We're just going through this super quickly. In honour of St Francis, brother of the poor. Now that's a metaphor. He wasn't literally, like, he didn't have a brother called Steve who just needed a bit of money. Um, so it's a bit of a metaphor. Closeness and compassion. Which, of course, is what he was famous for and venerated for. Talker with birds. And this is another piece of word choice. It is what he was famous for. Um, but it brings that idea of nature, which Norman McCaig is very fond of, into the poem. Um, and over whom he had the advantage of not being dead yet. So even limited advantage will go. It will be lost eventually. Okay. So that's stanza one. We've got this dwarf who has barely anything going for him. He, the only thing he has is that he is alive. Um, he's even more, he's in poverty just like St. Francis. He has absolutely nothing. The only thing he has is that he's alive and even that he is going to lose. So it's this incredibly tragic scene that we're shown with the backdrop of this very beautiful church. Okay, stanza two then. A priest explained... This is important because explained is not what is what he's supposed to be doing, right? So not his job. How clever it was, and clever here is repeated twice in this stanza. It's an important word. It's the word choice. Clever it was. Not kind. It's clever, not kind, right? So clever is to do with intelligence, but that can be very cold and dispassionate. And that's not a good thing to be, according to Norman McCaig. Um, how clever it was of Giotto to make his frescoes tell stories that would reveal to the illiterate um, rather than help the illiterate. It's about trickery. The goodness 
of God and the suffering. Again, we've got word choice. It brings us back to the dwarf who is still suffering um, of his son. I understood. This is so key. We've got really good enjambment here. Um, I understood and word choice. And the enjambment emphasizes the word choice. He understands he doesn't agree. So it's to emphasize his disagreement with the policy that the church is taking. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not helping the dwarf. And he understands that on a deep level. Um, the speaker of this poem understands and is judging that from a deep level. I understood the explanation and the cleverness. Again, clever, not a compliment. Word choice, not complimentary. And it's cold, it's unfeeling, it's uncaring to be clever in this situation is bad. Stanza three, our final stanza, we move, we shift focus, we've had the dwarf, we've looked at the priest and now we are shifting focus to an entirely new group of people. A rush of tourists. So this is word choice. Unthinking. He's almost using it like a collective noun, right? Tourists rush around. They're not particularly taking things in. They're not being compassionate or helpful. But it's almost not their job to be because they're tourists. So it's, it's less damning than it is for the priest. Clucking contentedly. <clears throat> Apologies. We've got alliteration. And we've got the beginning of an extended metaphor. Okay, clucking contentedly, it gives you that double C sound. It does actually sound like clucking. Clucking is an onomatopoeia as well, of course. So alliteration, extended metaphor, and technically onomatopoeia as well. Um, it gives us an idea of sort of mindless birds, which takes a little bit of the blame away from the tourists. It's not necessarily their fault. They're not intelligent enough to see what's going on. Unlike the speaker who has understood the cleverness, the birds, the tourists have not. Fluttered after him, that links to here. It's part of that extended metaphor, but now it's word choice as well. Um, and then here we've got scattered, which is word choice. It shows that the priest is not taking enough care, right? So it's uncaring um, and thoughtless. The priest isn't taking enough care. He isn't being reverent enough of the grain of the word, right? Which is a metaphor. Here it's being used to describe sort of the Bible. Now, Norman McCaig was an atheist. He didn't think of the church or he didn't believe in God. So it's interesting that he refers to the teachings of the Bible by way of describing it almost as sustenance, right? The grain of the word, we eat grain. It's, it's something that helps people to survive. Um, so he is using the church's own sort of idea of itself here. It's a metaphor. It's very um, sustaining and nutritional, right? Um, so here the priest is not being careful enough with something that should be very, very important. It was they who had passed the ruined temple outside. This is a metaphor for the dwarf. The dwarf is being described as a temple um, because... He is neglected, but valuable. Whose eyes wept pus, and again, this is word choice. I'm going to have to come down here. There's so much going on in this poem, it's unreal. Um, it's also a little bit of an allusion to um, a lot of miracles, where a lot of statues and things tended to weep. And weeping is a big thing, um historically within the church it's to do with miracles and spirituality so there's a kind of inversion of weeping here um but word choice it shows again that like grossness of the dwarf that external disgust um whereas inside he is a temple outside he is um kind of revolting whose back was higher than his head again we're just going to bring that down it's part of that grossness it's part of that um revolting exterior which completely contrasts and that's part of that as well who said grazie 
This is important. Grazie means thank you. Um, so he is grateful despite everything. Um, and this shows the inner sort of beauty and compassion. And now we've got this very long simile. In a voice as sweet as a child's when she speaks to her mother or a bird's when it spoke to St. Francis. So this simile is super, super key. It's the end of the poem. It's incredibly important. Here, the dwarf is being compared to two things. He's being compared to a child, and specifically a female child, so the most sort of innocent, um, vulnerable, and quite feminine. Um, it's quite feminizing to refer to him as this, and we know that the dwarf is male because it says he throughout, so there's an interesting thing happening here. Um, and then the bird as well. So we've got nature and closeness to St. Francis, which the priest lacks. Okay, so those are the key um, elements within the poem. Now I'm going to talk through the basic plot. We've read it, so we should already know this, but let's go. Norma McKay goes on holiday to Italy, to the town of Assisi, and visits the Basilica of St. Francis. It's a beautiful place, um, and you'd think he'd be having a good time, but instead he is pinpointed on this homeless dwarf sitting outside of the very expensive and well-maintained church, and he starts to think to himself about how cruel and unfair it is. Um, the priest who he sees is running tours of the church and pointing out paintings and showing off all the brilliant and expensive art they have within the church, rather than helping the homeless man outside which is obviously what a compassionate and good church would do. The tourists that are there to enjoy the paintings and enjoy the sights ignore the plight of the dwarf and are taken in. They're kind of tricked by the priest um, because they are shown to be, as we've seen, sort of ignorant and animalistic. And then McCaig watches on and judges. He comes to the conclusion that the dwarf is closest to St. Francis in terms of moral purity. So for our characters, we have got the dwarf, who is homeless outside. We've got the priest, who is shown to be sort of the worst character within this. We have got the tourists, um, who are kind of ignorant, but not necessarily morally at fault here. We've got St. Francis, who um, was this incredibly important figure within the church and who did a lot of good for poor people. And that's why he has the church built in his honour. We've got Giotto, who is referenced briefly, who is a painter. And then we've got the speaker, who is Norman McCaig, um, or a proxy for Norman McCaig, enjoying this experience or, or having this moment to think. So these are our central figures within the poem. It's really important that you don't mix these up. Over the years, a lot of people have written things saying that the dwarf is called Francis, etc. They're not. These are all separate people, most of whom are alive at different times. Um, so it's important to know which each of the characters are. The themes we've got are hypocrisy of the church, civilization versus nature, poverty and suffering. These are the key themes in this poem. Um, those are the major ideas that he's exploring. The idea that the church should, should be doing more than it is um, and that it's sort of using its status as this charitable and morally good um, kind of uh, thing in order to levy that to get money out of people who believe that when in fact they are none of those things because they aren't helping the very obvious person in need of help outside of their own institution um civilization versus nature that idea that the more civilized you are the better you are is shown to be untrue in this poem because the church with its incredibly high class and um artistic works of art and representation aren't fundamentally good um, whereas the dwarf, who is very close to nature, but obviously isn't very civilised, um, is shown to be more morally virtuous. Poverty and suffering are shown to be um, sort of a fundamental part of human experience in this poem as well. So those are our ideas that we get given, that horrible suffering part of life. Um, the main techniques we are given are enjambment, showing that like... Um, caustic tone, that idea that he disapproves of what is happening. We've got extended metaphors and we've got imagery. Um, 
we're given a lot of contrast throughout the poem between the dwarf and the church, the dwarf externally and the dwarf internally, um, and expectations and reality. We've got a conversational tone that is frequent throughout most of McCaig's poetry, and we've got this structure, the three stanzas sort of focusing each on different characters. We start with the dwarf, we go to the priest, then it's the tourists and back to the dwarf in the final stanza. So the structure is very clear as well. Our key quotations for this, if you were only able to remember four, these would be the four I would remember. Sat slumped like a half-filled sack. Is sibilance and alliteration, suggests that deflation, um, that depression element. And the simile, it's worthless and devalued. I understood the explanation and the cleverness. We've got that enjambment showing the disdain and disgust McCaig feels towards the church. And then a rush of tourists clucking contentedly. We've got that extended metaphor dehumanising, absolving them of partial guilt um, and alliteration. They are happy and ignorant. Um, and the ruined temple outside, if you can only remember one, this is the one. The ruined temple outside, that metaphor, the contrast, the external versus internal and showing the value, the ignored value of the dwarf. Okay, so... That's everything from me. I'm going to leave you with these key quotations. If you can't remember anything else, these are the ones. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.